Good morning, campers. I'd like to continue reading from this book, Koto Sawaki's Commentary on the Song of Awakening. This is from page 228. One day, Shakyamuni's disciple Mao Lien wished to test the range of the Buddha's voice. He set off toward the east and walked straight forward without stopping. Although he covered considerable distance, still he heard the Buddha's voice. Using one of his supernatural powers, he managed to go beyond some thousand myriads of Buddha lands and reach a country flying the banner of the Buddha Komyo. So the Buddhas, uh, there's lots of Buddhas, there's not just one, just in case you didn't know. Mo Lien arrived right in the middle of a meal. The great iron bowls were filled with rice, and plop, he fell like a drop of water onto the edge of a bowl. The Buddha of this country measured 80 yujun, with a yujun representing 40 leagues. He was therefore 12,800 kilometers tall. This was a truly large Buddha. He couldn't even have seated himself on our terrestrial globe. He would have hung it on his belt like a medicine box. This Buddha was surrounded by his disciples who were arhats, and in all points similar to this Buddha. Their bowls as well were so large that all of Japan could have been put inside. It was on the rim of one of these that Mao Lian landed. So, there's only one explanation for that, aliens. But what I really like to talk about today comes on page 221. And it is a commentary on a verse that goes, Truth is without foundation and illusion is empty from the outset. If we simultaneously dismiss both existing and non-existing, Emptiness is also non-emptiness. Koto Sawaki's commentary on this is, Truth is without foundation and illusion is empty from the outset. What is truth? What is illusion? Ask an owl what night is and it will tell you that it's day. Likewise, water is a friend of the fish and the enemy of the drowning man. Truth or illusion? Man decides it in his own way. But in true reality, neither truth nor illusions exist. It is written in the Shinjin Mei, Do not seek truth, be content not to judge. Considered carefully, truth and illusion are points of view. Well now, a point of view is a perspective, an aspect under which a thing presents itself. You have a point of view and I have mine. Our points of view on the same object can be totally different. Dogen wrote in Gakudo Yo Jinshu, the 62 opinions have their origin in the self. For some, gold is a treasure, for others an enemy. There are those whom gold makes swell with pride and those whom it diminishes. One day a fellow came to say to me, These days I am finally beginning to understand that when I have no possessions my world becomes larger. Indeed, the more we human beings possess, the more difficult our lives become. Others who have nothing celebrate every sort of windfall, such as being offered a free train ticket in response to an invitation to the other end of the country, lacking which they'd have had to scrape the bottom of the drawer. Truth and illusion are defined by man and have no existence in themselves. It is said these days they are concepts, fabrications of the mind. One cannot say that this is the truth and that this is an illusion. This being, this is. That being, that is. We're hearing a lot of opinions these days, and a lot of people are becoming very fixed in their opinions. And the opinions uh, about the, you know, the whole crisis the world is going through, uh, at least as far as the United States uh, is concerned, tend to line up along political lines. The Republicans have one belief and the Democrats have another belief, and, and they, they're really well sorted that way, and it's kind of weird and scary. But we don't know whose opinion is the right one. We have to make an educated guess, though, and we have to decide what is the right action for ourselves in this situation. Luckily, we don't have to decide, well, most of us, and I doubt anybody listening to this particular video is among the people who have to be concerned about um, making a large world-scale decision. Like, I, I really doubt that there's any world leaders among my audience who have to, like, pull the switch or, or there's no mayors or, or, or governors. I, I really doubt that there's anybody like that listening to me right now. So for most of us, we just have to wait and see what decision um, 
you know, filters out from all the noise, but we're getting, we're getting loads and loads of opinions. And, and one of the interesting things, interesting in perhaps a bad way maybe, is that because so little is known about the virus we're all combating, you can put anything, almost anything, in there. You know, there's, there's all sorts of things. And, and nothing is known about the future behavior of the virus or the future behavior of humanity in response to the virus. So you can put all kinds of things in there about what people are going to do, what people aren't going to do, how the virus is going to behave, how it's going to turn out, you know, what the actual numbers are, when it started, you know, who had it, who didn't have it, how much immunity, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can go on and on. And from this relative lack of information extrapolate all sorts of fantasies about it that may or may not be true. And then on the other hand, we have very learned people who have some idea what is the most likely thing that is happening or going to happen and so forth and so on. And we can kind of listen to them and go, okay, well, maybe that guy's right or maybe this other expert is right. And I don't know which expert is right. But whatever we decide doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on the situation. The only thing that has real bearing on the situation is what we do in our limited sphere of abilities. It's, it's a lot like what Shinryu Suzuki said, shine one corner, and I bring this up a lot. They, he, he had this phrase that you should shine one corner of the world, and it's kind of a cute phrase because English was not his native language, so, you know, he, I think what he would probably have said if he was a native speaker of English is clean up one corner of the room rather than shine one corner but I like shine one corner because it's a very interesting little phrase and that's what we can do we can shine one corner of the world and our opinions about the larger thing that's going to happen or our predictions about what's what's going to go on next largely irrelevant in fact I would say for most of us entirely irrelevant for me entirely irrelevant it doesn't matter what I think the world should do, I am going to kind of get swept up in what it actually does. And that's my particular karma in this case, and probably all of our particular karmas in this case. And I got an interesting question in the emails, which to me seems to be somewhat slightly related to this. And maybe I can make the relation clear, or maybe I won't be able to, but I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, the question is, do you still find comfort in your ego? Like when you have a comforting thought, do you attach to it? When you have comforting thoughts, do you attach to them is actually what it says. But anyway, same, same difference. And I thought about this for a while, and here's the answer I gave, and I'll read it to you. I try not to because it doesn't help. Every comforting thought contains a scary thought hidden inside. I picture it like this. I imagine that the comforting thought is printed on a small sheet of paper, like a 3 by 5 card. I don't know what they call those in, in countries that don't use inches, but you know those little index cards? Or, or a dollar bill, or a euro bill, or, or you know, a shilling bill, or whatever you have over there, uh, you know, a, a, a money bill. On one side of the card or the bill facing me is the comforting thought. On the other side is the opposite thought. If I accept that card and hold on to it, I'm accepting and holding on to both sides. And that's the way I look at comforting thoughts. I mean, sometimes, uh, to, to tie it all together, the opinion that you have on where the world is going or not going might be a comforting thought to you to, to kind of keep in mind. But by accepting that comforting thought, you're also accepting the opposite thought, which is the discomforting thought. And the only way to do anything about any of that that I've found has any use at all is to try to let it go completely and that's easier said than done but the way you do that is by each moment that the thought comes up don't cling to it and it's not that clinging is bad and not clinging is good I, I tended to think of it that way and think that I'm a bad person because I'm clinging to the thought you know I'm a bad Buddhist good Buddhists don't cling. But that's not really quite true. It's that the non-clinging is actually the best thing to do with those thoughts, even the thoughts that give you comfort. Uh, don't cling to them. Just stick with this moment. And I'll tie that all up and wrap it up for you in a little bow by giving you this little quote from also the same book. 
The present moment traps eternity. The present moment saves life. Dogen has written on this subject, even if a person lives a slave to appearances and in agitation for a hundred years, if for a single day he commits himself to an active practice, not only his life benefits from it, but also that of all beings for eternity. That day your life will have been worthy of respect, the same as your body. When your practice is sustained, you love your life, your heart, your person, and you respect yourself. It's by active practice that all the Buddhas are actualized in daily life and that one attains the great way of the Buddhas. And then Kodosawaki comments on this, saying, In living the present moment to its fullest, one saves eternity. If the present moment is not completely lived, one debases eternity. So there you go. That's my message today. Hopefully you find it a hopeful message. Wow, that's funny. Anyway, that's it. That's me. I have PayPal and Patreon links below, and as I keep saying, that is number one, how I make my living, and thank you all for continuing to support me. Number two, I realize everybody's in effed up shape right now financially, so if you got to diminish your uh, donations or can't donate at all, don't worry. I think enough people are keeping donating that will hold this through i hope until <laughs> until everything goes to hell i don't think it's really going to go completely to hell but i think we have some stuff to go through before things get back on track anyway thank you very much for listening and looking and being there and we'll see you next time bye